Merry Christmas. The South Today Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with MOLMAP, the skin cancer detection specialists. Tonight on the South Today, is it just in Eden? The spotlight goes on the city in a new marketing campaign to attract visitors. A Christchurch suburb with great potential takes a big step forward with plans for a major upgrade. And Queenstown welcomes a new hospitality venue with a religious past, but it's a long way from home. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. Dunedin has a new marketing campaign with the advertising mixing cinematic landscapes with down-to-earth charm. The destination campaign is aimed at encouraging people to visit Dunedin using the brand's familiar wry humour. With the tagline, it's just Dunedin, this new marketing campaign is hoping to challenge what people around the country think they know about the Edinburgh of the South. The humble brag of the campaign mixes cinematic imagery of Dunedin's impressive landscapes with the city's down-to-earth charm. The Dunedin City Council believes the campaign is a juxtaposition of the beauty and grandness Dunedin offers alongside the wry humour it's known for. Enterprise Dunedin says it's the biggest campaign since the Pretty Good Plan D, which ran during the COVID-19 pandemic. Those adverts compared elements of Dunedin to international destinations and were designed to attract Kiwi visitors who were unable to travel overseas at that time. The new campaign set to cost around $150,000 a year for up to three years and is aimed at the New Zealand market, including potential students. It's Just Dunedin will mainly be a digital campaign using short videos with content released in stages over the next 12 months. In Dunedin, the South Today. A new hospitality chain is announcing plans to open 13 refurbished hostels across the country with the aim of having them up and running by Christmas. Haka House Hostels has already opened its first three properties in Tekapo, Christchurch and Auraki Mount Cook, with Queenstown and Wanaka locations on the way. The new budget chain's keen to fill a gap in the market since the pandemic, which forced many hostel and backpacker properties to close their doors. Around 1,800 rooms will be renovated and brought back to life. The chain's targeting an influx of premium budget travellers arriving for an extended stay in New Zealand, a group dubbed as Flash Packers. Hucker House Hostels is expecting a strong market over the summer season, led by visitors from America and Australia. Across the South, for South Today. After being touted for decades as a suburb with great potential, the seaside community of New Brighton say they're starting to see real tangible progress. Recent private and council investment has locals and retailers optimistic that next year's planned rejuvenation of the rundown mall will inject new life into the area. Huge changes are getting underway for the seaside suburb of New Brighton. The former Westpac building is currently being demolished to make way for a new pedestrian walkway. The building was purchased by council as part of the Oromav extension project, hoping to create some more foot traffic for the area. We're going to create a pedestrian corridor into the mall, and what that means is that you'll have more people coming into the mall, and as the rest of the development goes ahead, hopefully that's starting next year, then you're going to see quite a different um, pedestrian mall, which is going to be pretty fantastic. Donovan says once completed, the walkway extension through to Hawke Street will effectively cut the mall in half. She says this will condense New Brighton's commercial core from 11 hectares to 4, meaning fewer vacant buildings and existing spaces being put to better use. Mid to late next year I think you should see some quite significant transformation. So it's just the beginning, but I think you're going to see what I think is the next chapter of the New Brighton Mall being a destination for the rest of the city and it'll be a great place for locals to visit as it already is. Further landscaping and design work by council is well underway for the project, with the plan scheduled to go to community consultation next year. Demolition work is hoped to be completed by Christmas. In Christchurch, the South Today. 
A few South Otago residents showcased their hidden talents over the weekend as part of a range of family fun activities at this year's AMP show. The annual event gives thousands of attendees a taste of the rural life, showcasing what it means to be a true blue Kiwi. Children and adults soaking up the fun as the locals enjoyed the range of activities on offer at the Tokomairiro AMP show over the weekend. A local Scottish bagpipe band got the party started at the Milton Showgrounds on Saturday, the show treating the 2005 strong crowd to food, animal rides and performances. Tokomairiro AMP Society President Nigel Woodhead was delighted to see the positive turnout for the 157th year of the event despite questions over the weather. It's really good actually, it's awesome crowd and cool vibes and um, yeah, it's great to see so many people here. The Toko Talent Quest proved especially popular this year with an impressive number of participants hitting the stage. Just to see um, the amount of talent and the, the skills that come out of the woodwork, you know, people you don't sort of, you wouldn't pick them as, as being entertainers and they turn up on stage and do it, do it a great job. So. That's really cool to see. Performers of all ages competed for glory. 17-year-old Kira Wallace from Dunedin taking home the talent trophy and $1,000 in prize money. In Milton, the South today. Queenstown's latest hospitality venue has officially opened in Frankton's Country Lane Precinct. The restaurant and bar used to operate at a church, but its origins are a long way from Queenstown. A change of pace for this church building with a different congregation moving in. Now situated in Queenstown, it's housing the new bar and restaurant Sundays, built as a family-friendly eatery. After being transported from its original site in Waipahi, near Gore, to Country Lane in Frankton. So our landlords, which are the Grant family, um, an old Queenstown family, they had a vision, well they do have a vision for this place, Country Lane, um, to create sort of legacy for their family. and bring a whole bunch of independent businesses together and create a space for the community. Restaurant owners Annabelle Herbison and Alex Long say they connected through having their sons at the same time. After both moved south from Auckland to Queenstown, they were keen to create a space for families in the community to come together. They say the menu's inspired by European wood-fired shared plates. Guests can dine inside the refurbished church or on the outside lawn, with spaces for children also planned with the future playground and petting zoo. They have a whole bunch of horses and goats and um, they're very much part of the Country Lane family so they're going to be right there. Um, where our grass area ends the, the horses will be over the fence of all the animals here. Yeah. Herbison says they wanted to hold true to the church's aesthetic, sourcing the vintage lighting from Invercargill and sourcing pieces for the interior design from second-hand stores in the area. In Queenstown, the South Today. FI Yakane, still to come on the South today. Santa Parade season continues as the big guy stops off in North Canterbury. And as we count down the days of Christmas, we'll look back at some of the big news stories from May. All new episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put some colour in your life. Tuesdays, 7.30. Such a sweet girl. dreaming about. This music. The Power of Dreams by Honda. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life.
age concern Otago, we offer a range of services to support Otago seniors to age well with dignity and independence. We provide social work support, visiting service, health promotion and social activities. Check out what we have on offer at ageconcernotago.com. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Welcome back. Well, it was a busy weekend for Father Christmas as he continued his journey around the South Island. The Jolly Red Man made a stop off in Rangiora as the guest of honour in the New, uh, North Canterbury Town Santa Parade. Santa continued his busy travels, touching down in Rangiora on Sunday afternoon to the delight of both young and old. Hundreds of families lined the streets through the town's central business district, cheering on the floats, marches and street entertainers who joined in the parade alongside the Jolly Traveller. Rescue and emergency vehicles, large and small trucks, exotic sports cars, walkers and dancers all kept the crowd entertained as they heralded the arrival of the man of the moment, Santa. The festive day continued in the nearby Victoria Park with the annual Christmas Carnival giving parents a chance to find some last minute gift shopping ideas while the children were kept busy playing in the carnival atmosphere. In Rangura, the South today. Now continuing with our look back at the year in review, police were kept busy in May in both Dunedin and Christchurch. The southern regions joined in celebrations of the King's coronation and a Highlanders legend farewelled his beloved team. A 60-year-old Dunedin woman was arrested for murder in late May after police were called to her Tainui address where a man was found dead. And in Christchurch, the armed offenders squad arrested four residents on a range of charges surrounding a house in the suburb of Hay Hay during the day. In Gore, council dramas continued. Protesters gathered outside the council buildings in support of Mayor Ben Bell, celebrating during the meeting after a vote of no confidence in the mayor was abandoned then we shall move on if there is no further discussion. There was disruption at places of higher learning. Teachers across the country took to the streets, taking strike action to demand better pay and work conditions. The large budget blowout issues at Otago University boiled over with staff, with many joining in a stop work meeting, which turned to protest against proposed staff cuts. This level of support come out, seeing that people are willing to, to stand up and say, this is not healthy for the university, this is not healthy for Dunedin and its whole, and this is not healthy for the tertiary education sector of New Zealand. Across New Zealand, residents dressed up as celebrations were held across the country, the Union Jack flying proudly as Kiwis joined others across the Commonwealth in marking the coronation of King Charles III. In sport, Southern rugby fans said farewell to a great as Highlanders legend Aaron Smith played under the roof at Forsyth Bar Stadium for the final time in the blue and gold. I enjoyed my ride and I've met some great people and, um, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Like I love Dunedin and I've loved what they've given me as a man and supported me through thick and thin. And the sounds of quacking and shotguns echoed across quiet rural spots as friends, young and old, got together for the start of the duck hunting season. Across the South, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. The Edinburgh of the South has a new tourist marketing campaign with the wry humour tagline, It's Just Dunedin. Investment into New Brighton's shopping mall has Christchurch residents optimistic about the retail makeover. And Queenstown's latest hospitality venue Sundays has seen a former Otago church move to a new home in Frankton's Country Lane. 
And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. We're welcoming in our associate editor, Mike Houlihan. Hello, Mike. Good day, Hannah. What can we expect to read tomorrow? Well, we've got a story of an Invercargill court case where the police took a novel approach to gathering their evidence, one which the judge didn't approve of and told oh. them so in no uncertain terms. Uh, we've also got uh, an update on the Fortune Theatre, former beloved theatre venue in uh, Dunedin that mm -hmm. may be up for sale very shortly. Right. Um, we've got a quirky story about a family uh, that have got three generations of pilots uh, and the Euro School which has trained all three of those generations of pilots. Mm -hmm. um, support, we've got wrap up and coverage from today's uh, big game between the uh, White Ferns and Pakistan. Yes. And in our cooking section, Fresh, there's a whole bunch of uh, fresh and sweet treats that you can make for Christmas. A particularly appealing looking batch of fudge, which I've got my eye on. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Mike, we look forward to reading. Thank you for sharing this evening. Thank you. Time now for a look at your weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoreMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, and a strong southwesterly airflow will blow over the South Island most of this week, bringing showers and some strong winds to the south coast, but mostly fine weather inland. Heading to the top of the South Island, Nelson's looking clear with fresh winds and 19 degrees. Greymouth is fine with 17 and southwesterlies, while Christchurch is slightly cooler with 15 degrees. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago, South Westerlies and 15 degree highs all around for these spots. It's becoming fine throughout the day for Ashburton and Timaru, but watch out for some showers in Uwamaru. Heading westwards to the Central Lakes. Well, a windy day ahead through here tomorrow with gusty South Westerlies. Expect 15 in Queenstown and a sunny 16 degrees in both Wanaka and Alexandra. Heading further south, the strong southwesterlies continue through here and the showers will stick around for another day too. Temperature wise, expect 13 in Gore and Balclutha and just 12 degrees in the Catlins. Across to Invercargill, cloudy tonight as it drops to 8 degrees. The next two days will be cold and cloudy with strong southwesterlies, just 12 with showers on Wednesday, but sunnier and warmer on Thursday with 14 degrees. And finally heading to Dunedin. Strong south westerlies and showers tonight with a 9 degree low. Then tomorrow is going to be another windy day with gale force south westerlies and cloudy skies with 15 as the high. And Thursday, well another windy day but it looks sunny across the afternoon with a top temperature of 14 degrees. And that's the news this Tuesday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. You can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand, or follow us over on Facebook. Search for The South Today NZ to see our favourite stories from around the regions. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite opopo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air. The South Today Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with MOLMAP, the skin cancer detection specialists.